was discovered and rediscovered multiple times. The legendary story is that at uh, La Cinémathèque Française, Henri Langlois, who was the founder and you know, the prototype of all archivists in the world, uh, he realized that a, uh, cans of film labeled unknown were among other cans with actually unknown films. And nobody realized that one, for one of them that was the title of the picture. I am not sure, frankly, that, that this story is true. It's a little bit too impressive to be true. But anyway, that's how originally the French release print was found. Then uh, Langlois was a friend of James Carr, the curator of the Eastman Museum, sent it to America. And that is the version that was known for the last uh, 60 years. And then when I was working in Russia at Gosfilmofond, I realized that there we had a different version with Czech intertitles. The nitrate was probably captured by the German army in Europe, probably in Czechoslovakia. Then the Soviet troops took it from Germany and then Gosfilmofond repatriated it back to um, Prague where we found it. So uh, these two prints were combined, the French one and the Czech one. And even though they were both incomplete, miraculously they all matched completely. We have the continuity. Every single shot is now in the... We know the length. We are missing about a minute or two minutes. But we have also a list of shots. So every single shot is there. Maybe, uh, maybe there is, you know, like the beginning or an end of several shots are missing. But uh, the story is absolutely complete, yeah. We could, let's say... 98% complete. I think that Todd Browning was one of the most psychologically sophisticated American directors. He was very much interested in different uh, pathologies, both physical and mental. And of course, his signature work is Freaks, a sound film from 1932. Well, The Unknown is in a way his first attempt of going that direction. Uh, he, his idea was, he thought about if somebody is, is armless, what kind of situation this person would be in? What would, could this lead to? So uh, the unknown was the first attempt and then he had more and more of that. But of course it is also a very, very transparent sexual metaphor. Because the leading lady who is played by a very young and almost unknown John Crawford, about, uh, well, several years before she became a big star, uh, she is pathologically afraid of arms and afraid of men with arms, which I think is a, is a metaphor, very much so. Um, so uh, it is uh, Browning's interest in, uh, in pathology, in anything pervert in a way, but it is also uh, through this he is talking about uh, sort of the different twists of normal human relationships. And what is great about this film we know that Lon Chaney, who was a huge star of his time and was known as a man of a thousand faces because of his incredible makeup in many films like Phantom of the Opera, there is no makeup here, almost no makeup here. And we can see what a splendid actor he is. He doesn't need makeup for that. And, uh, um, you know, it's a story which is not very believable, and he makes it believable. Browning and Lon Chaney, the two of them. We can recognize the circus also in this. Yes, yeah, but the thing is, I mean, he loved the circus and, and uh, you know, the scary side of the circus. That is what he loved about it. You know, I think that, frankly, as a, uh, as a psychological story, The Unknown is better film than Freaks. Freaks is extremely impressive because there was nothing like that. But Freaks is a little bit too physical for me, to me, too, too physiological. And in The Unknown, it is really a very Dostoevskian film, if you want. Todd Browning never, you know, adapted classical literature. There was never any uh, sort of serious drama in his films. They're always over the top. But uh, it is this, this ability of uh, having very, very naturalistic acting, uh, which makes these stories extremely believable. And this is why it was important to reconstruct the film, of course, because we didn't find any missing plot lines, any missing scenes. Just little reaction shots, little turns of the head, little gestures, you know. Um, otherwise, it is too condensed. When it is too condensed, it becomes uh, too artificial, too cinematic. And here, you know, you, you are absorbed by the story. You, you are distracted deliberately 
by little gestures and reactions, and you can really uh, you know get into the you know into into the soul of into the brain of the main character. This was, I think, the idea.